If someone calls it socialism, then we must compel them to acknowledge that the Bible must then promote socialism. GOP Congressman Dan Crenshaw got Bible schooled by Reverend William Barber. Now, this all stems from a portion of Barber's comments uh, at a recent DNC event. So I'm going to play a clip of that now. But by the way, just a, a little warning, there is some audio popping issues uh, on this video, but uh, you'll still be able to make out what he's saying. We, when we embrace moral language, we must ask, does our policy care for the least of these? Does it lift up those who are most marginalized and dejected in our society? Does it establish justice? That is the moral question. If someone calls it socialism, then we must compel them to acknowledge that the Bible must then promote socialism. Because Jesus offered free health care to everyone and he never charged a leper a copay. You want to have it's time for us to say, if you want to have a moral debate, bring it on, baby. The Bible says that every, the nation will be judged by how it treats the poor and the sick and women and the immigrant. The Bible says that God makes it rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you want to call caring for folk socialism, then the Constitution is a socialist document because it calls us to promote the general welfare and to establish justice. All right. Now, the comments here are, you know, while fantastic, shouldn't be controversial. I mean, <laughs> this is not... The, Jesus cared for the poor. This is not... This should not be news to anybody. Um... And the point he's making here is if, if you know, the right wing is going to call that socialism, if the right wing is going to call helping out the poor and, you know, Medicare for all, if they're going to call that socialism, well, then let them let them call it socialism. But the Bible and Jesus talk about helping the poor. I mean, that's most of the book. <laughs> but here's what Dan Crenshaw uh, tweeted out about this, because he was he was really offended by these facts. Deliberate misreading of biblical, of biblical principles by DNC to promote socialism. The Bible teaches charity with one's own time and money. Socialism teaches charity with other people's time and money. So, not the same thing. Now, it's probably not a good idea to try and correct uh, William or Reverend William Barber on the Bible. So, he responded to this tweet with uh, some more facts. Isaiah 10 says, Woe unto you who make unjust laws and rob the poor. Jesus says nations will be judged by how they treat the poor. By your definition, what the Bible calls caring for the poor, the sick, and the immigrant is socialism. We call it the moral center and prophetic social justice. Sorry you don't like the Bible you claim to read. Damn. Now, I'm not sure if it's okay to say this, but this reverend absolutely destroyed Dan Crenshaw. I mean, this shouldn't be news. Obviously, Jesus and the Bible talk about helping out the poor, and there is a lot of very anti-wealth message uh, messages in the Bible as well. I mean, Jesus, like, it's hilarious how the right wing has tried to construe the Bible and use it for horrible things, use it to hate the poor, use it to take away health care. I, I mean, it, if you are actually religious, all you have to do is maybe read the book that you claim to to be affected by. It's a it's it's amazing to me that that these people are so disconnected from this book they claim to have so much uh you know so much uh support for. But um here's the so the full quote that uh Reverend Barber is referencing here and by the way this is from bible.com so I hope this is a good reference <laughs> for for showcasing to you what the bible actually says. So uh, as Reverend said, uh Isaiah 10 says here Woe to those who make unjust laws, to those who issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of their rights and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, making widows their prey and robbing the fatherless. I mean, it shouldn't be hard to figure out what this means. Woe to those who make unjust laws, issue oppressive decrees, deprive the poor of their rights. Like, again... If you want to, if you, if you're, if you're going to claim 
<laughs> that you are on the side of the Bible. Maybe actually read the damn thing. Otherwise, don't be a Bible thumper. Say, screw Catholicism, screw the Bible, I don't care. I want to take away from the poor. I want to ensure that only people that, that can afford health care get health care. I mean, fine, do that, but be honest about it. Don't pretend to be, you know, <laughs> a, a disciple of Jesus and just vote to destroy the world. Now, to give you some examples of Crenshaw's recent votes, I mean, this isn't, this is just a few of them. He also has some horrible votes when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to, uh, you know, giving weapons to, to uh, Saudi Arabia and, and whatnot. But here are some other votes that Crenshaw has uh, recently made. So, establishing humanitarian standards for people in the custody of Customs and Border Protection. He voted against that. Uh, raising the federal minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. He voted against that. Reversing changes to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which helped, which did help people until those changes were implemented. He voted against that. Lowering prescription drug costs and reversing changes to the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> he voted against that. So, just to go over here, Dan Crenshaw is against uh, humanitarian standards for people in, in customs or uh, in custody at the border. He's against giving the poor a raise. He's against protecting people from financial institutions that continue to rob them. And he's against lowering the cost of medication. You know, just as Jesus would do. Now, before I go, because obviously Dan Crenshaw is a horrible person, uh, I want to play some more video here to leave on a, on a positive note from Reverend Barber's uh, speech, because he said a lot of fantastic things uh, throughout this entire night. We are talking about half of our children are poor and low wealth. The vast majority of people of color. But when we disaggregate these numbers, we see that there are more poor and low wealth white women than any other demographic. Too often we talk about poverty as if it's just a black issue. But if you can't pay your light bill and your lights go off, whether you black, white, or brown, we all black in the dark. <laughs> and it's not enough to parrot the neoliberalism consensus that if the economy does better, we all do better. If Wall Street is better, we all do better. It's not true. And in fact, that plays into Trump's con. Wall Street got a boost from the tax cuts this administration pushed through, but poor and low wealth, wealth people are struggling to survive. There might be a recession coming, but there are 43% of this country that's already in recession. It's not enough to talk about lifting the middle class because 140 million Americans aren't sure they'll ever get into the middle class. 43% of the nation, and many of them are the 100 million people who stayed home last time and didn't vote because they never hear their names in the public square. So, just so much truth being put out there from uh, Reverend Barber. Now, what I love, I mean, I love many things about these clips, but if you go back and watch them, watch Tom Perez's face. So Tom Perez is the DNC chair. He is a neoliberal through and through. But throughout, I mean, you have you have Reverend Barber calling out uh, neoliberalism right there on stage, the lie of neoliberalism. It's just fun to watch Tom Perez and his, you know, his attempt to not squirm during these moments or, or the, the moment where uh, Barber brings up uh, how you shouldn't blame non-voters because the Democratic Party essentially uh, wasn't speaking to them. I mean... Look at, watch Tom Perez perk up when he talks about the non-voters, and then he, his mood kind of shifts a little bit when, when it's clear that Barbara's talking about how we, you can't blame those people because you're not, because the, the party isn't speaking to them. So it just, uh, anyways, I mean, apart from Tom Perez, his speech was just absolutely incredible, and uh, I gotta say, it was fun to see um, Reverend Barber uh, Bible School, Dan Crenshaw on Twitter.